Whenever you plan a church, one of the big questions that you will likely ask yourself many different times is where do we meet? What kind of facility, what kind of location works best for us? And so we want to take some time and talk about our story, uh, each of us, behind that facility and that location, that space search. Let's start with you, Devin. Talk to us. Give us the story behind your search for a facility, the space, where do you meet, how do you have church in a new city? Yeah, yeah. So we are portable, um, which means basically all of our equipment is in, uh, you know, in a trailer. We, we haul it in and haul it out every single week. And so um, we were looking for spaces that obviously would fit that. And so up front, we considered everything. And we were looking at some different schools. There was a, a great performing arts center uh, but just to be honest with you, it was super expensive, yeah. uh, very expensive. Yeah. And finally, um, for launch Sunday, just about, a, I guess it was about two months before we launched, we ended up settling in um, in a really cool space called The Factory. Uh, the Factory is like exactly what it sounds like. It's an old furniture factory, about the size of a shopping mall. And uh, they had hollowed it out and extracurricular activities, everything from soccer uh, to, to hockey to little boutiques uh, were in this kind of common space. And so yeah. when you walk in to the sort of center entrance, there was a second floor, um, 250, just 200 to 250 seat um, ballroom. Yeah. And we ended up settling on that. Uh, it definitely had some logistical challenges, but Paul, I can tell you, it was an incredible place to mm. start our church. We're not there now. God's moved us uh, to a different facility, which is equally impactful in its own right. But that's how we started, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, they would fire up the Zamboni every week with the adjacent hockey, uh, ice hockey <laughs> rink about the time I would start altar call, uh, and so you'd hear this giant buzz. <laughs> Other than that, though, no. it was amazing, and that's when I knew I'd preach too long if I heard the Zamboni. So uh, that was our story. It was a really cool place to start, and we have some incredible memories in that facility. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, in terms of the journey, I think, definitely getting that concept of just portable church, you know, launching portably is more cost effective. Um, it gives you some more options with space. Um, and you know, most churches that we're launching right now are starting that way. A lot of churches, you know, are, are going to launch that way. Um, we were portable as well. Uh, we have been in, uh, I'm going to count them as I'm telling them. Sure. We started off in a middle school auditorium yeah. at five o'clock. We then moved from the middle school because of some conflict issues to the high school mm -hmm. auditorium. Um, and, you know, we were there for probably six months to a year. We then moved to an elementary school um, and we were in a cafetorium, which was very <laughs> interesting. I told our I told our team never to call it a cafetorium, uh, by the way. Culture matters. Language dictates culture. Yeah. You cannot ever call your auditorium, a cafetorium, even if it, it is that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, we moved uh, We moved from there uh, to a, a Methodist church that we rented from for a season uh, that didn't have air conditioning. And then uh, the Lord opened the door. We're in a full lease now of a building in a beautiful location uh, that, that um, the church basically didn't survive the pandemic and has allowed us to take yeah. over. Uh, their space and it's been awesome. Mm. So I say all that to say just a few things. Number one, you know, you've got to be flexible if you're going to yeah. plant a church. <laughs> and and you know, again, you may be in an area like I know you were in the area where maybe cost effectively you were able to do some other things that where I'm at I was not able to do. Mm. But you have to be flexible uh, about where you have church. It's not about the building; it's about the gathering of people. But then two, I'll just say, you know. Learning to steward financially well yeah. from the beginning gives you options. Yeah, Teaching people to tithe, you know, stewarding the church finances gives you options where, you know, we've been able to be flexible based on the needs of our church yeah. and based on circumstances we couldn't control, whether that was a pandemic, whether that was a, uh, a, a board of the church we rented from deciding they didn't want us there anymore. We've been able to be flexible right. and get into new spaces because of the financial position we're in. Yeah. And so, you know, that's just a few thoughts on, on our journey. Uh, but, uh, man, a lot, a lot of locations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think for us, and one thing we tell church planners now, if, that, if there's any idea that you need to dis destroy, 
and burned to the ground right now is the idea of you going into a church planning context and securing right away finding that perfect yeah. long-term facility that will last you forever. Yeah. Like they said, the word flexibility, I think, is really important because you won't find that perfect space. And it may take you several different years, several different spaces before you get there. And uh, for us, we were in small groups for eight months before we ever had our first service in like an official church style building or facility. And so our first facility was a series of three houses and homes in our 800 square foot apartment at the time. And uh, for us, you know, we started for the first eight months in a series of three homes. And then we found a, a, another church and we rented their building uh, on Sunday evenings. They had church on Sunday mornings and a little bit south of town. Uh, and we used that church for, I think, about an hour, an hour and a half, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, because at that time, all the other schools and kind of typical facilities that you may look for were outrageously expensive. Yeah. In our unique city, the situation was uh, people told us it's where church plants go to die. There are a lot of several different kind of denominations and organizations of different styles and types trying to plant in our area. And so uh, we stepped into a city in a season where the prior years, a lot of church plants had kind of risen and fallen and burned a lot of bridges mm -hmm. with a lot of people in the city. Mm -hmm. And so the schools, the school system, hiked all their prices up to push churches out of their schools, yeah. made it too expensive to rent. And so it wasn't even an option. Uh, like at, at the time, uh, a middle school was, was going to rent to us, but it would cost us uh, an outrageous amount of our budget that would have exhausted everything, left nothing else, you know, no funds, you know, other than that. So for that wasn't an option for us. And so we stayed in homes as long as possible and really kind of built initially on kind of a small group uh, style church. And then we found another area church we rented for a year and a half. And we looked at all kinds of different facilities, like w uh, empty warehouses that we had to build out. We flirted with the idea of monetizing a portion of the space through like a sure. coffee shop, daycare. We, we talked about a co-working space and, uh, uh, you know, the business, you know, would, uh, would, would pay Absolutely. the lease for the church kind of thing. We tried all kinds of different ideas. Nothing worked. And then we got a call about a downtown uh, space, a church kind of like your situation, uh, they just completely dissolved and they needed someone to take over their lease. And so for us, uh, we had some funds raised up and we had a big margin of funds available that we had been saving. And so we were able to completely remodel a space. We changed everything from carpet to light bulbs to doorknobs to air conditioner vents and, to, and it allowed us to really create a space that has lasted us over three years. And so uh, what are some best practices, guys? So there's a church planner uh, and, and spouse watching this video trying to figure out, you know, they've got several different options of spaces and they're trying to figure out what's the best space for me. What's the best practice that you would advise for church planners in reference to their location? Mm, yeah. You know, the first thing I would say is um, what's the reputation of that location in your city? Yeah. yeah. You know, what's the first impression people get when they think about that particular building, school, or even area? Because when you are starting a church uh, and they don't know who you are, they don't know anything about you, they don't know if it's quality, the, the thing that they are making their initial, the only thing that they know when they hear about your church yeah. is about the location. Yeah. Right? They know about that school. They know about that side of town. Yeah. They know about that, that particular area. And so I would just encourage, like, make sure that the first impression in your community about that particular space that you're going to rent or, or purchase uh, has a, a pretty positive view. Yeah. I think that's incredibly important. Uh, and then you got to make sure that the location um, has the amenities. Um, so look at the parking lot. That's something that like a church planner practically doesn't always think about, sure. but you can have a space that's big enough to have church, but there's not enough parking. Yeah. And if people can't find a parking spot, they're not going to keep coming back to your church. Yeah. You got to look at the kids space, yeah. right? You know, if it's got a beautiful sanctuary or a beautiful lobby or, you know, there's options, but there's nowhere to have kids. Yeah. Well, you know, you're going to have a really hard time building a, a congregation if, 
you know, a, a unchurched parent that is not, you know, uh, used to just kind of roughing it out with their kids, uh, yeah. they're not going to do it if they don't have good kid space. So you got to you got to look at things like that. The parking, you got to look at the kid space. You got to, you know, look at some of these amenities that maybe you wouldn't think of because you just think would well, just have good church. No, like how is that going to affect, you know, the different types of people that come to our church on a on a broader level. So sure. those are a couple of things I'll think about again the kind of the the reputation yeah. and then some of the amenities making sure it fits your needs in that location. Yeah. Devin, best practices. Yeah, I think to sort of piggyback off what you just said, it's vital that the space uh, reflects the people that you feel like are your target audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You know, for us, uh, we noticed that right off the bat, like I'd mentioned, being at the factory, I mean, who's going to be, you know, at soccer fields, hockey rinks? Um, It's people with families, young children. And so we would literally stand in this common area <laughs> and up the stairs would be the auditorium that we were in and the stairs were cool because they weren't like a closed in stairwell it was like very open space and so you could literally see um you could actually see into that into the auditorium from the bottom floor and we told our welcome team we were like when somebody walks through those doors i don't care if they've got 50 pounds of hockey equipment or soccer equipment strapped to their back you welcome them like they're about to walk into our church. (laughs) And so, uh, you know, we had some brave, brave welcome team members that would do that. But, but eventually we moved beyond that uh, to a middle school and our situation is a little different than yours, Paul. Uh, Wake County, the County that we're in in North Carolina is top 20 largest school districts in the nation. It is a huge school district. And so uh, they gain a lot of revenue based on a lot of churches renting. Gotcha. And yeah. so um, we were able to, for a similar price, move to the middle school when they decided to take that ballroom that we were originally meeting in and create a new space uh, out of it, like a business space out of it. But both of them do the same thing, and that is they're neutral, they're safe, they have good reputation, and they reflect young adult, young family demographic that we naturally reach yeah. because that's who we are. Yeah. And so that's who we trend well with. And so yeah. the best practices would be that. And then, of course, uh, one of the practicalities that I would have to mention is you're going to have to be innovative if yeah. you're going to do this well. Uh, you're going to have to think outside the box. Do not get trapped um, thinking in, you know, well, there's only three locations. It's either going to be a performing arts center, uh, a you know another church, or a school. Well, I will tell you what ripped that out of me was COVID. Uh, during COVID, during the pandemic, <clears throat> because we were portable, we were able to really change uh, the places that we met. So we ended up in the, <laughs> we ended up in some wedding venues. Uh, we ended up in the attic of a coffee shop. We ended up in the basement of a coffee shop. Now, yeah. none of these situations were where where we would want to be permanently. Uh, but even in our uh, our pre-launch, whenever we did our um, our uh, startup events, we met in. Uh, we had a really cool, like, vintage bowling alley. You know, not not your normal bowling alley. It was a really cool vintage bowling alley that they've actually redone. It had a cool side room that we could meet in that would seat about 75 to 100 people. Yeah. And so we used that for our, our launch events. It wouldn't have worked for uh, necessarily, you know, having weekly church in. But my point is, if you're going to do this well, you need to give yourself prep time, yeah. lead time. Don't Don't be thinking about this a month before launch. Be yeah. thinking about this right now. Even if you're a couple years away, start eyeballing different places in your community, mm-hmm. and there's a good chance you're going to turn up something that could end yeah. up being pretty cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I add this. I think, you know, practically, also got to make sure, you know, pray, one, of course, of course yeah. but then talk to the key decision makers in terms of, like, how to get this done. Yeah. And you got to talk to the key decision makers. I'll, I'll share this really quickly. You know, we uh, kind of did what you were talking about. We were going to launch, and I didn't have the situation squared away sure. <laughs> because the school district we were going to rent from, they wouldn't say yes. Yeah, They yeah. wouldn't answer my phone calls. They wouldn't answer my emails. I was kind of at a loss. But during a season of prayer um, that we had, we really locked in on the location stuff and, you know, prayed a, we prayed a prayer circle around our city. Yeah. I mean, we literally walked and prayed a prayer circle. Well, the very last building on that circle um, the Lord told me to lay hands on it and pray for it 
I prayed and I said, God, give me favor with whoever's in this building. I prayed over our whole community, over every building in our community. God, give us favor. Well, come to a few months out from launch, we still didn't have everything squared away. Yeah, sure. None of these people answered the yeah. phone call. And I finally said, give me the, I said, give me the, the address of the place where the person who can make this decision, where's their office? Yeah. Because again, when you're trying to rent or trying to lease, there's somebody that makes a decision. A lot somebody. of people whose names are on the, the docket, but there's one person who often makes a, a decision. A lot of gatekeepers. A lot of gatekeepers. I finally, I, I found the address and I just drove there. And lo and behold, it was this building that I had laid hands on wow. months before and prayed for God to give me favor. Yeah. Well, I'd been trying for six months to get in this school district. Yeah. They wouldn't say yes. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't even answer my emails. Mm. I walk in that building that I had prayed, laid hands on. I didn't know it was this, the building where this, it was a maintenance building. I didn't know gotcha. make the connection, but I walked in yeah. and in five minutes, what I'd been trying to do for six, eight months, it was done, yeah. you know? And so again, I'll just say that practically, it's like, be, you know, this building stuff is very spiritual. You know, it, it's, you're going to be at this certain place and you're going to reach this certain type of person or this other place. You're going to reach this person. So be incredibly prayerful mm-hmm. uh, about the location stuff. And by the way, the building stuff is going to help build the faith in your church yes. yeah. too, right? Yes. When when you get in another so space true. that can help reach more people, yeah. it, it elevates expectation of faith. So it's a very spiritual area. So pray and make sure you talk to the key decision maker. Yes. Don't don't let your assistant pastor have this conversation. Yeah. Don't let your wife have this conversation. <laughs> don't let anybody else have this conversation. Sure. You have to have this conversation yeah. about location with the person who can make the decision, not their secretary, yeah. not anybody else. You got to get yeah. to that person because yeah. you'll you'll find sometimes God will give you favor in that moment to get it done. Yeah. And I've heard that story in a lot of contexts, right? I, yeah. I totally agree with that. And another thing is you can't take rejection personally. Yeah, um, Like that was one thing that, because a very it's similar so situation. We had tried three or four different locations and all that prep time and lead time that, uh, that we had given ourselves ended up leading still six weeks out, me having no clue where, where we were going to meet. Yeah. And the place we ended up meeting, you, you kind of jarred my memory. <laughs> I had so many unanswered emails and phone calls. Finally, I went to the place, knocked on the door, and I met Emma, the property manager. Mm. And I'm expecting, because of all of the lack of communication, to get this like cold shoulder, angry person. She's the most bubbly, sweetest lady, so great to work with. And we started renting, this is crazy, for 250 bucks a week when we started. That's how cheap it was. And so, yeah, we did get rejected and a lot of closed doors. But if you start taking every lack of communication personally, yeah. you're going to be in big trouble because it's going to deter you. Uh, and you just need to be ready for rejection. Like, it's the reality of the situation. Is you're going to get more no's than you do yeses. But if you will continue to endeavor in that, you just watch. Like, the right door will open at the right time. Um, but you just got to keep pushing forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I think one of you said, I don't remember which one, the importance of being creative. I think that's really important in reference to your facility or location. Like you've got to be really creative. Mm-hmm. And I remember for us, we got the call about a potential space, you know, downtown our city, and we looked at it and we liked everything about it, but it had 16 parking spots. Hmm. And so, you know, for a three-year lease, that's not a lot of parking spots. Like, we would have maxed out those spots right away. And the day we saw the facility, I had a friend come with me and uh, a member of our our, our core team, and we all looked at it, we talked about it, and there was this little Tex-Mex restaurant right across the street. And so we've just seen the facility, we've taken pictures and all that, and so we decided to go get some tacos. And we're at the table in the restaurant talking about the parking situation. Like, is this going to work? Or can we park people on the street? You know, our, our city was kind of squirrely about giving people tickets, you know, and so I didn't want to get our people get towed, you know. And we're trying to just navigate, think through this. Is this going to work? Like, we liked everything but the parking situation. And, um, uh, and, and we're sitting there, and uh, the, the lady who waited on us was the owner of that restaurant wow. directly across the street from the church, sparked up a conversation, and she allowed us, uh, she granted us use of our parking lot for free 
any day of the week after 2 p.m. Wow. And so what we did is the first year of our church, we had church at 3 o'clock. And uh, we did that for a year, and it worked out. And uh, and so God will kind of set some things up. And we had no idea we were walking to a restaurant to get some tacos. And uh, the lady who owned that restaurant, oh, yeah, you can just use our parking lot. And boom, the parking issue was solved right yeah, then and there. Yeah. And so it, it, it was really key. The second thing I think I'll say is you've got to enjoy the season that you're in. And the facility, wherever you are right now, you're not going to be there forever. So maximize it, leverage it and make the best use possible of that space and just enjoy the season you're in in reference, to, I think, to your location. Yeah. And one last thing I'll say, because it's a very important thing for us, is prior to the launch of our church, we had three different people give us the exact same word of faith about the journey that we're about to jump into, planning a church. They didn't know each other. You know, they weren't connected in any way. They weren't sharing notes, you know. And, uh, but they all gave us the exact same word of faith, and it was this that if you focus on people and you reach people and you don't focus on finances or facility, God will give you finances and a facility. Make people your priority and God's going to answer all the rest of your needs. And so we did our best to do that and God has provided finances and a facility at the right time that we needed it. And all of us here today believe that God's going to do the exact same thing for you. And so thank you so much for watching today.